Here we go, here we go, here we go. It looks like the company's called Virtual News, okay. Oh, hello. Okay. A very brief intro. Um, so let's see what we got here. Monitor calibration, navigation help, whatever that is, whatever that is. About and quit. Let us go for monitor calibration. Oh! English. Okay. Adjust the brightness and contrast of your monitor. Wow. What type of game is this going to be? To obtain the highest quality. Cool. And it's... Not in a language I can understand. No? Ah! The events narrated in this story belong in your time and your space. What you will be reading took place not very far from your world and will touch you, even if you are not yet aware of it, like the breath of an invisible demon. Another language, another language. German. Uh. Okay. So this game is called Sinkha. The 3D multimedia novel. Are we actually in the game now, or is this just... This is basically a screensaver. That's uh, basically a screensaver. Sinkha! By Marco Patrito. Patrito? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Phallic shaped rock. Listen, we are some distance from the heart of the city, but a sinister chorus of metallic sounds can already be heard. An agonizing screech of dying structures, the weeping of steel without a future. <laughs> yes, very vintage CGI. Good evening, Fu. Okay. Oh, yes, thank you. I have them right here. In all of Thalisa, the desolate city of stricken buildings, not stricken chicken as I almost read, there wasn't a single nook or cranny where one could escape that blood-chilling sound. Some say it was the wind, or perhaps the settling of metal structures. In truth, in more than 600 years, no one had yet been able to understand what really caused it. It was a recurrent sound, like a sinister wail that provokes more anxiety during its long pauses rather than height of its lament. <sighs> okay. Good, good to see you though, Didi. And also evening now. Oh, the two lists saw each other for a moment there. There was no possibility of escape for those born on Thalisar. Far outside the city walls was the rest of Orgone. Orgone? Orgone? Let's just go with Orgone. An inhabitable planet forever under a cover of restless sulfuric clouds, and a voyage towards the stars was only within reach of the wealthy few. Peace could not be had through biomechanical drugs. Oh, it could only be had through biomechanical drugs. The one means of seeking comfort from reality. Oh, this is nice. Ding dong, music. The rudimentary alarm system had been tripped. Maybe this time, Rastak would be able to surprise whoever or whatever was getting into his 
Afro Bodos. Wait, Afro. Because it's like Aphrodite, but it's Af Afro de Bros. But he would have to hurry, which was certainly no easy feat for one of his bulk. And even less so for his partner, a rusty half ton robot. Careful, it could be a grab, said the robot, taking some care to simulate the worried tone of voice. Ooh, ooh, are we in control? No. Wow. Very vintage, much wow. That's actually pretty good for a 3D face. In the... But this was 1994. Yeah, for 1994 um, CGI, that's actually pretty damn good. Yeah, 94. I mean the the um sets and all that. Yeah, no, that's that's par for the course. But the faces for that early on in CG, it's just called Sinker. Like yeah, that. Wow. He, he found a girl. How are you going to get that out? Rastak seeking the girl began to streak. Hey you! What are you doing here? You Get out of there, you little delinquent! We get it. No harm done, said the robot as he slowly shook his metal head. Just a bit of support liquid. Oh hey, wow. Yeah, look at she's look moist looking and everything. Halen <laughs> Halen had already sneaked into the Amphro Amphro uh, fuck Amphro bro, bro, uh, fuck it. Who named this thing? <laughs> Aphrodo Bros. Hello, Sam. No, no, no. You, I, I, I slept in, so we'll be going for at least two hours. Well, you know, two-ish hours. So we've been going for nine minutes. Uh, many times, and she knew she would get caught one day. Maybe she wouldn't be punished, but she would certainly have to forget about the erotic dream simulators until she was of age. Oh, God. I, I wasn't expecting this to be an underaged erotic dream simulator. Uh, Halen's erotic dreams weren't very vivid because the biochemical drug only elaborated on memories. <laughs> Don't you love her water jet? No one was saying she's of age. Is she 18 but maybe not 21? Yeah, you're right. It is not baby butt fully on display. She she could be 18. It might be a place that 21's considered of age. Oh God, I'm hoping so. I know her. Her name's Aelin. But she's too young for these type of dreams and I don't want to get into any trouble. Because I'm a 40-year-old man with a schoolboy bird drawn onto my face. Oh, there she goes. Hey, I have control now. And the cyborg guy, yes. No, don't you? you I'm just the, the 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 layer of thing against your skin's wet. 
One could walk for hours or ride the elevators down to the lowest levels without ever running into anyone. Yet, there was a feeling of restless spirits lurking in the shadows, in the walls, or further away, behind a light barely visible through the haze. He had control of what? I think, yeah, I think this is turning out to be more of a multi- This is like a living, a living book without any interactivity. I thought maybe I'd get, you know, control to, like, click on one thing or another thing, but no, it seems so far I've pressed the spacebar a bunch of times and then clicked a button once to, uh, go to the next page. The old market was probably the only place in all of Thalassar where a little human warmth could be felt. Yet even there, the sinister atmosphere and strange sensation there were more than people had ever... Wait, there were... Oh, fuck. The strange... <laughs> Why is this fucking thing so hard to read? I mean, yes, I have dyslexia. Um, the sinister atmosphere and strange sensation there were more people than had... Then, fuck, what is this? There were more people than could be seen persisted. What is that phrase? That's not correct English, right? Now here she comes, and there's a lizard. Is that a knife? That's a knife. Oh no, someone someone knifed one of the eggs. That's right, yeah, the living books are like that. Grandpa, telling me about the great star portals again. Grandpa, are you alive? Grandpa? Grandpa? Old Asar frowned, pretending to be irritated. Helen, how many times do I have to tell you about them? Come on, please. Pretty please. Uh, Asar looked around cautiously and then whispered, Did you bring the Akka? I think the answer is yes. Like, why did she have to be underage? Okay, let, let's just pretend she's 17, uh, 9 months, no, wait, 11 months, and 2 weeks, uh, yeah, in 2 weeks. She's almost 18. Okay, give it here. Well. Then, so you want me to tell you about the star portals? Ah, yes, that masterpiece of the gods, said the old man as he began to speak in the slow sing-song of one reciting an old lesson. The big cylinders that unite the stars, through them you could arrive at faraway places. You could even get within the presence of Arahon. Our ancestors arrived here, thanks to the star portals and built Thalassar together with the other fugitives from Nacros. Is it true there's a portal nearby? asked Helen as she waited for the usual answer. Yes, nearby, up there in the sky, there was a time it brought merchants and sometimes even gods to us. Now it is only used for taking the wealthiest away from here, but for us it's inaccessible. For us prisoners of this cursed world, where one grows up and grows old much too fast, like you, child. Well, I'm going to call you of age. I feel better thinking that you're of age. As Halen listened to the old man's words in space, beyond the atmosphere of Ogon, of Ogon the huge megaport, after long years of silence, be was again being activated. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> To an old man like him, everyone's a child. That's true. 
everybody is a child because we were all born to parents. Oh, there it is. That ugly space thing. It's a star portal, they say, but to me it looks like a, a Chinese finger trap. One big enough for someone to get a, their wang stuck in it. Ah, oh, the starship. Ugh. Dispatched by the governing corporations emerged from the metaport. And although it appeared to as if it had been generated by a gigantic cylinder, it had actually come from a place hundreds of light years away. It's like an Imperium of Man spaceship made of Lego. Yep. Oh. Nope, no button clickings for me. Here comes another woman, probably underaged as well. Is it true that it's gonna collapse? asked Shane to break the silence. Oh, look at them all. What? Thalassar, the city of the abyss. Hannah, the android, shook its head. They've been saying that for thousands of years, but that creepy city is still here. Is it true that the steels... Uh, wait, is that story about the, the steels seeking true? The wind foundation settling. It's like something alive, unlike me. Like distant screams. They say that it's like a terrifying metallic whale and that many visitors have gone out of the mines in a matter of days. I'll enjoy your trip to Thalassar. Well, I'm sure glad Thalassar isn't our destination. It is. <laughs> hmm. I don't think it. I don't think the other side of Ogon is any better. It's an inhospitable world. There's nothing but desolation outside of the walls of its only city. Thank you for the hydration, Dee Dee. Yep, this is most definitely just a novel. Unless it's a- oh! Oh, oh no, it's just- it's the page turn. I wonder how many pages there are. Oh, now I gotta go full on Vogue's. Well. Alright, so there's a tiny ship next to the big one. Shane, noticing that the computer had stopped transmitting the usual routine, turned abruptly towards the monitor and said, Ah, uh, these sensors are mapping out a huge object approaching the planet? It's a sinker vessel! Could they be the re same here for this? Fuck. Could they be here for the same reason we are? Sinker, have you ever seen the gods in person? Once, no big thing. They're an extension of Aaron, the living planet that created them in the likeness of different human and alien races. They could pass for mortals. Oh yeah. Do 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 do. Certainly enjoy I hope everyone's enjoying the vintage CGI pod with the actually quite decent uh, 3D modeled faces. I suppose at least, you know, like 
since they're not interactive, we don't see any of them moving, so it makes it easier for them to deal with a single frame instead of, you know, multiples. <sighs> Halen had agreed to meet Deesa at the big base in the lowest point of Thalesar, a palace to house the important guests that had been constructed down there at the centre of the artificial lake and a truly important person had just landed on Ogorn. Oh, I see them. They're walking up in the top right, left corner. Fuck. I am having a bad dyslexic day today. In the right left corner. Deesa often went with Aelin on her incursions. Together they had managed to have fun in spite of the oppressive atmosphere they breathed in Tavadasar. But now Dina thought Helen was really going too far. Hmm. One of these days, you're going to get yourself into trouble, she said. I only want to have a look at them. What's wrong with that? They're gods. For us. It's too much to even look upon them. Uh, I'm going to grow old and grey one of these days, and I'll still... Oh, <laughs> And I'll still be stuck in this cursed city, thought Helen, as she grasped an old pair of hypersand binoculars she'd found who knows where. But at least I'll uh, but at least I'll have something to talk about. I'll have a memoir. A memor yeah, a memoir, fuck. I have a memoir that doesn't belong to this cursed place. I think that's supposed to say memory, but okay. A memoir. There they are. There are two of them, and one looks like a human is a hunk. Wow. I'm ready for my erotic dream simulator tonight. <laughs> and now a fish. Yeah, it does look like they've painted on some of these as well. Those lights on that in that place. It had become routine for Halen and her little friends to meet at a place they had baptized Sun Beach. Because it's, it's sunny and beachy. Of course, it wasn't really a beach, but metal uh, sheets of metal covered in debris that had become immersed in one of the many canals that snake through Thalassar. Even the sun was nothing more than light from a photo stimulator for cultivating mushrooms in a nearby field. Well, then how the fuck do they even know about beaches? Um, it was through force of habit rather than the desire to see her friends that brought Halen to Sun Beach. Hey, Helen, have you gone to spoil them again? Halen mentally formulating an answer but did not speak. I know, it's sheer foolishness. Do you go there every day? Halen's thoughts tumbled one after the other rapidly as if to answer their questions, but her lips remained frozen. It's something I've got no control over. They say you can't get close to them without paying for it with your life. Nonsense. Maybe, thought Helen. Are you going today too? asked Deesa in her approaching tone. But Halen, absorbed in her thoughts, was no longer listening. Maybe I'll die for sure. Because he's going to leave and I'm going to be stuck here. I'll be living here. And living here is like being dead. Jesus, I'm dramatic. Hey, Ellen, are you going to answer us? You're too good to talk to us now that you're hanging out with the gods. Harped on another friend while Halen was mulling over things in her mind. I only ever saw them from a distance. Maybe you're right. Maybe I am nuts. But please, leave me alone. I'm still just thinking, though, according to the, uh, the dashes. Leave me alone on this shitty sun beach. 
Why does the metal sheets have this texture? Shouldn't they be smooth? Smooth like my skin? Do, 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 do. Is she gonna meet the the two the two male ones and being like, oh the the, the human looking one's hot and sexy, but it'll be the ugly one that's actually gonna be like, hello Helen, would you like to be my wife? Let me tell you about suckers. Oh dear. I think we're actually in for the long haul for this one, because as even though it's not interactive, I'm I'm intrigued to see where this goes. Charus was by no means the most dependable of professionals, but he was the only dermo sculptor Helen could afford in the uh, with the little money she had. He could t tattoo an indelible colour that she would look more grown up and rid herself of that horrible scar. What scar? Did anyone see a scar? You're much too young. Let me see the colour of your money. Alright, come in before someone sees you. Kids, tattoos don't make you look older, but when you look older, tattoos look really old. Uh, well, I mean, it depends on the tattoo and the placement and all that. Why, oh, you're just a child repeated Char Charu's in a tone of voice that was more insinuating than dubious. Here we go. Gravitational vices to hold you in place, said the de said the derma sculptor it's in a tone that was most was far from reassuring. That the machine itself was like, yeah, I've got you. Oh, God. I have no fear, said Charus. You won't feel any pain. I'm about to use a genetic cyberplasmic scamming generator by decoding the... Oh, jeez. Uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. We can regenerate the epithemal tissue. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I guess I think when I think about it, she did have a scar on her cheek. Oh. Wow, okay. We've, we've put on some eye makeup. Cool. Let's move on to the chromatic reprocessing. This biomechanical liquid, thanks to its delicate enz enzymatic polarization structure, alters the structure of the melanin by reproducing the desired coloring of the epidermis. Oh, wow, okay, so you've given her lipstick as well. I suppose you didn't understand a word of what I just heard, hissed Charouz with the as he admired Helen's face with satisfaction. I let you in on a little secret. I don't even understand it all that my, my, myself. I just know this contraption works. Jesus. There, all done, said the Dermo sculptor, his tone of voice suddenly changing. Yeah, he, he's turned her into a Barbie. Now get out of here. I don't know you and you've never been here. But tell all your friends about me. I mean, what? I don't know what you're up to, but watch out for yourself. I've done an excellent job on you, and you're now as exciting as the Skrugs as you are for the crabs. I, c if I, I would jump you... Oh, fuck. I would jump you myself if I were only... Get out of here, damn it! Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, no, that, that that's a nightgown. Oh, yeah, so she did have a scar on her cheek that's gone, and now she's a Barbie doll. Oh, and the, the fish is back! Suddenly, a fish. Oh! I must be out of... I really must be out of my mind. 
thought Ellen. What are my chances of even talking to him? She repeated to herself, almost as if she was trying to talk herself out of it. Like, how, how did he, how did they, what's it called, um, uh, do cosmetic surgery that gave her glossy lips? I mean, I guess she could have just licked her lips, but still. And even if I do manage to get close to him, what would I even say? Please, my lord, take me away with you. I only want to be near you. I don't want to be any trouble. Many others must have pleaded with him. I can't wait to see this hung and for us to just go like, Oh, God, he doesn't, he doesn't look great. The He'll have me thrown out. He'll be leaving, and I'm just gonna die. Um, Helen. Paralyzed. Even my voice. I can't even talk anymore. I thought for a moment it was gonna be a tentacle monster, but I don't know if a goo monster's any better. You've been eaten by Kirby. This is not the type of eating that I was hoping for. The Thalassar uh, security robots were just as surprised as Helen was by the effectiveness of the Sinkar's protection systems. Cool. Oh, look at you! 3D porn! In a clumsy attempt to appear more efficient, the two robots decided to escort the Sinkar's plasmas with its prisoner. Do 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 Like, it's just funny, because look at all the care. No, I don't think this is hentai. Well, it, it, might, it might go that way. It's a, it, it seems to be a 3D visual novel. We intercepted this girl. She was trying to get into this chamber. Said the robospheroid. What are her intentions? Asked the sinkers. What? Where is the singer? It looks like is is it the that little blue and white face that appears to be on a chair? Like what? What am I looking at? The mind probe has already analyzed her. The emotional test has excluded any aggressive intentions on the contrary. You can't just keep saying on the contrary. What do you mean by on the contrary? Exactly. My lord, she's come to fuck you. Uh, she, <laughs> she's tried to get in here because she's fallen in love with a sinker. She's never even talked to him. No, no! Erupted like an explosion in Helen's mind. This can't be love. Please. Well, I don't believe I'm the lucky one, observed Jared, ironically. No one even knows what the fuck I am by looking at me. I suppose, yes, I am at least the little blue and white face on the chair. Is it a chair? Or is he like a crab thing? Give me more context clues. Where is he? Her dream was tumbling down like a sandcastle. Helen was dazed and confused, and her thoughts were confused. She wanted to scream, but no sound would come out of her mouth. Enough! Enough! I beg you, kill me! Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, um, uh, uh, look away, children. I'm gonna put a sensor on this uh, for YouTube. Uh, kill me, but don't humiliate me like this. Uh, yeah, he, he, not that hot. It's just, mm, mm. It wasn't in the erotic section. I'm just saying. <laughs> All of these exo projects have an erotic section. It was not there. Akka, the, the sinker that resembled a human, looked Helen over with his steel-colored eyes and said, Interesting. They're usually afraid of me or they respect me. 
Some even worship me, but no one's ever fallen in love with me before. That's a pretty good 3D teardrop for that for this era. It wasn't in the horny adjacent section, no. It was in the official novel section. Don't you realise, in spite of my appearance, I'm not really human. Excuse me for interrupting this in romantic interlude, but we've got the data we were looking for. Sir? Sir? Hello, I'm here too. Well, there's no time to waste. Let's get out of here and get a born duck Ron. What should we do with this girl? Let's take her with us. Maybe she thinks it's a good idea if we... Wait, maybe it's a good idea if we asked her what she thinks, said Jared reproachfully. Any inhabitant of Thalys, I would jump at the chance of being taken away. And besides, she also happens to be in love with me. Akka! Okay, okay, you're right, agreed Akka. Do you want to come with us? No, no I mean, uh, that is... I understand what you're thinking, said the sinker as gently as he could. You're right, and forgive our sarcasm. I believe it's due to the fact that uh, we don't understand the true meaning of your feelings. Anyway, if you want to come with us, I'd be happy to offer you my friendship of my wang. I mean, my friendship of my wang. I mean, my friendship of my wang. Okay, so they, they sh wait. As the shuttle lifted off from its platform, Helen was filled with mixed emotions. She'd never been aboard an aircraft before, but no, that wasn't the only reason. She was filled with a fear of the future as yet unknown to her, and by the knowledge that she would never be able to turn back. Never go back again. Now you've opened up the door. Da -da 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 one. Never Never be the same again. Oh no, I, I, for some reason. Oh no, they does have a line about never going back again. Been a while since I thought about the Mel music from Melcy. The immense sinker vessel was there, immobile above the mountains. Helen, who had never actually seen anything like it before, could not stifle a childish exclamation of astonishment. Wow! It's humongous! Like my wang. Yes, Dacron's actually a, set a sentient city with more than 10,000 inhabitants, which is several unities are sinkers. Is it... is it like a city inside? No, not really. There's an entire universe inside. Fuck? <laughs> Welcome to Robotech. Or at least the parts of Robotech I remember. Uh, the immense starships capable of interstellar travel. Gigantic thinking structures endowed with great powers. And inside them, entire universes. I wonder how many pages this is. I mean, she's been taken away. Where, where are we going from here? Are we 
are we getting her laid is what I'm I'm asking. Is this the end of it? Wait, those birds had no heads. A breeze. Oh god. Those are pretty damn good teeth for that era of I mean a 3D. And the smell of salt air. Chlorophyll. Wait, chlorophyll? Uh, honey, you're about to be chlorophylled. Sorry, I, I'm just taken back by how good those 3D teeth are. Maeve appeared out of nowhere, gliding silently behind Helen. This silence makes a certain impression, doesn't it? After having listened to the lament of Thalysar. It's been years. It's been right years since I was born. And they got you a sparkly dress. Look at that. So what they also give it? <laughs> Did they also give her eyeshadow? Yeah, like she had eyeshadow and lip and lipstick like tattooed onto her face. Why did why does she stand like that with her butt just present these these birds have no heads <laughs> The only peaceful moments I've ever had were induced by biomechanical drugs, said Helen as she had as sad memories flitted through her mind. Controlled realistic dreams, but still only dreams. Nothing at all like this. Oh god! Oh god! The, the, I, the, I just realized the robot thing has a... Oh, boy. Um, uh, what you see here is only an evolution of the concept. Virtual reality brought to a stable state. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's just, uh, just a hand, but... Oh, God. Uh, anyway, it's only illusion like my hand. How far can you go? There are no limits. You can see more places than you could ever remember. Dacron's imagination is almost infinite. Maybe they do... Like, it does look like they have little eyes where their necks are. So they don't have heads, but they've, they've got eyes. Wiki says this was released in 1995. Look, still 1995! And also, like, when it comes to these older games, sometimes the release dates are... are wrong. They would have found something to link this to 1994. They wouldn't have just been like, yay, hey, let's put it under 94. An enormous spacecraft who's... Oh, okay, said so hell. An enormous spacecraft in whose belly you could live countless magical multi-form paradises. This is Elin. a a a n a n Exclaimed Helen... Opening her arms to embrace the view. I think she, Yeah, okay. Okay, mate. Is this based on anything, though? No, Dacron is only a very small part of it. The The sphere of Elin is a network of planets, spacecraft, and artificial worlds. I only ever thought... I always thought that the only followers of the gods are chosen few. Cool. What is happening in this story? Other than girl falls in love with men from far away, gets taken to a new world. Maeve, enjoying his new role as teacher, tried to explain. Alien is a civilization with more than 900 billion beings. It's open and continuous in expansion, but it's not accessible to everybody. Only the individuals whose philosophies have exceeded a well-defined evolutionary phase are accepted. You mean, I may not be accepted? Asked Helen, worried. No, 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 don't worry. You've already been accepted. Besides, a sinker likes you. And that might... That is more than enough to... <laughs> May have hinted in a good-natured but ironic tone. Come on, Maeve, please. Don't start that up again. Don't make fun of me. You know he doesn't even remember I exist. Oh, 
Oh, back in Thalassa. Love you looking the wrong way. All right. Most of the Dacron bridges are made of plas plasma that can change its shape depending on the virtual projections. The only rigid materials are on the technical bridges. Here, the virtual projections are independent of the structures and similar to the immense and vertiginous panoramic windows, they can display the reality outside the hull. What the fuck is going on? So it would appear that the most disquieting hypothesis is also taking shape. Oh, that's not the voice I gave him before, but okay. Without, uh, said Akar, taking his eyes off, without taking his eyes off the desolate landscape of Ogon. Yes, there is much confusion indeed. Well, is it based upon, is the story based on anything for... Okay, so we finally got a better look at Jared. Okay, so... He still looks like the top of a chair. But I think maybe he's got, like, crab-like legs. Do you think he's, like, leaning forward and those are his shoulders next to his face? No, it's its own thing. Okay. Jared nodded. What we've discovered about Thalassar seems to have proved this theory. Can someone prove the theory about what the fuck I am? A secret preserved for thousands of years. <sighs> they didn't even have a choice. The true wonders of Thalassar had to be wiped out. None of its people after its founders was to know that the city was not built but found. Ooh! Or rather, what they thought was a city. Okay, what, what, what is it if it's not a city? Dekron, give me a current status report on the other hemisphere. Dekron's centennial voice seemed to have... Stentorian voice. Seemed to come from all directions at once. Gravitational turbulence constantly increasing. The corporation vessel is about to arrive. Okay, we're on page... 16-17. 16.5, I think they call us. Do, 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 do. Dacron began to move slowly. The enormous hull rotated majestically and then glided forward in a steady acceleration. Uh, Dacron was heading towards the other side of Ergon. Down there on the Antipodes, an indirect line with Thalassar was something very strange. Something that generated an unnatural distortion in the gravitational waves and had attracted the interest and concern of the sinkers and the governing corporations. Something that had a sinister link to the city of Thalassar. Back inside this big spaceship. Oh. See, that's some pretty decent 3D for this era. I kind of like that. I'd have that up on my wall. This less so. But the one with like, just the lips underwater with the, the reflection. Oh boy! Um, oh, uh... Can we... <laughs> Helen, can you keep please keep your clothes on, please? Please, please. And is this little pixie thing wearing pants? I don't think she is. But by the look of it, she doesn't need it. Ooh. 
Wouldn't it be funny if after swimming in the water, this is what Helen turned into? She became a space theory. Oh, okay, the space theories are helping out. And now she sits there in a towel. Or is this a dress? It now looks like a dress. It doesn't look like a towel now. Oh. Reality and illusion. At times it's impossible to perceive where one ends and the other begins. <gasps> Everything is filtered by our senses. And it's so easy to fool them. Get, please stop coming closer. Does the plaintive wailing of Thalassar belong to reality? Or is it just a figment of our imagination? I don't, as long as you keep wearing clothes. Helen raised her eyes in search of someone that she couldn't see and demanded, Dacron, please! Can you let me have a look outside? Or... Uh, oh! Oh! So the, the fairies were the little jelly things. Oh, and now she's sitting on it. There it is, oh gone. And it, uh, in a hospital world, an inferno. No one can survive there, beyond the walls of, Sa of Thalassar. They say that a terrible secret is hidden there. What could it be? What could the terrible secret be? Oh, okay. Cathar awoke from his topor. Like rivers spilling into the sea, ancient thoughts and new knowledge began to flow through his mind. Kalathar uh, expanded his perceptions across the sensory network that covered the entire planet and saw the new intruder. Oblivion had failed its task as guardian, thought Kalathar. Uh, this planet has already orbited around its sun 920 times from the day in which they got here. They orbited around the sun. Oh, I guess that's a so it's 900. It's only been 920 years. All right. They arrived from places of death, and then when they found these alien structures built for the purpose incomprehensible to them, they were not afraid, and they inhabited them like s insects that live inside walls. But the machine began to complete. Uh, what had been created to do and the vibrations began to hurt their ears and their minds and with the s sound came a fear they did not have before it was the reason they had hidden the true origins of the city from the children only this had delayed their condemnation Ogon, southern hemisphere at the antipode of Thalisar hello we're exactly above it at this point, the gravitational waves were of the most distortion. It's the same phenomena that had registered near the inactive megaport. The fog is particularly dense here. Look! What's that shadow? An immense chasm hidden by the clouds in Ovogon, said Shane, observing the, the landscape through a thick panoramic glass bubble. It's... It's a gigantic megaport dug into the bowels of the planet. What a place to put a megaport in the bowels of a planet. Well, in anything's bowels. That's where it poops, of course. Then Thalassar is a mass equilibrator, a gigantic mass equilibrator situated at the antipodes of the planet and not a real city. Henna, the android, had the sudden realization to the significance of that unlikely metropolis. Another piece of this disquieting puzzle has fallen into the place. Hello, thank you. Incredible, but who built this thing? Your mother. <laughs> that is what we have to turn out. Uh, uh, we have to find out. Pronounced Hena. Hera, Hena. At the inside of this angst was of the angst was an intricate tangle of narrow corridors and rooms. The only spacious area was the central hangar, which also doubled as the operations bridge. 
All right. Oh, I'm being picked up. They didn't even ask me out for a drink first. To tell the truth, this thing is really weird and I'm scared, said Shane. Me too, responded Hannah. Okay, so Hannah's the robot. Oh, that's what I was. I was a weird bit of metal. Hey man, the sinker ship has moved away from Thalassar. It's coming this way, man. The planet is in uh, the planet's in an area controlled by the corporations. Ain is a long way away, and they can't interfere. Oh, said Shane. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. In a barely cut, unconcealed nervousness. What is a sinker anyway? They could do what they want, noted Hannah with a sigh. They could eliminate the big corporations that govern the area of context with a snap of their fingers. But in this case, having them here makes me feel safer. The, gravi uh, the gravitational stabilizers are on the right. It's giving me problems. Hannah, can you check it out from up here? The fuck are you talking about? I've got some jamming on the monitors. Seems to be some kind of interference. I can see what looks like sparks on the hull of the angst. What is it? I don't know, and I don't like it, man. Dina, you better come back inside. Anna, get the modules back inside. Man, there's something moving on the hull. Look, no, it's not possible. No! Well, here comes the sinker ship. What happened to the corporation vessel? said Akur. Oh, they gone! It doesn't answer. It seems to have disappeared. No. Lure. We've, we've located it, but it's a wreck. Oh, no! I told you, man, I didn't like it. Jacron hastened to point out. There are no survivors, he added with a note of sadness. I'm going to have a look. I'm going to hydrate first. Thank you, Dickie. It could be dangerous, observed Jared. Every so often, your obsession for being careful seems to make you forget that we sinkers are immortal. Sir, I'm a weird crab thing. Is it? Does it float? Does he? Does Jared float? The fact that nothing is known to us can harm our subatomic cells is no guarantee of immortality, replied Jared. And here, we have something in front of us we don't know. Even better, the, un the bit of uncertainty is the spice of life, answered Echo with the arrogance of someone who, who is betting on a sure thing. Do
Whoever or whatever has reduced the Angus to the state, uh, to that state, had to have been very powerful. I don't think this was predominantly written in English as much as many big fancy words have been used. It's just the phrasing of some things. That or they should have hired a, a proofreader. To have just gone, what does this sentence mean? Excuse me. <laughs> eh, but what? Dacron, can you hear me? I can hear and see you, Dacca, no problem. I thought I saw something moving on that wall. Could could that be some animal? He asked Dacron, whose senses were scanning the area non-stop. <gasps> it's from my favourite nationality for weirdly written 90s games, so it's Italian! Yay! Thank you, Italy! Thank you! Man, the Italians were really good at 3D in the, in the back in the day, it seems. Uh, I, I mean, when I think about it. No, I think we're balancing this out with um, Night Long, so, yeah. <laughs> Negative. I haven't detected any movements to the point you indicated. There's no sign of life anywhere. Dacron's voice was directly in his ears via neuretic transmission. There it is again! Just now! Akka, are you going to get fucked up? Nothing, I'm sorry, Akka. Maybe you can see something that I can't detect, replied Dacron. Is that a euphemism for saying I'm having hallucinations? A sinker doesn't have hallucinations, replied Dacron, but his words were far from reassuring. Well then, it means we've got something to think about. Bring me up! Whee! I'm sorry, Akka, but that's not a possible- What? Are you kidding? Asked Akka without much conviction. Yeah, we're fucking off. We've had some problems. Uh, there's something very powerful that we can't control. I'm leaving the pla- You're leaving him?! What's Halen gonna think about this? I've suffered an, in an intrusion, said Dacron. Someone's missing. No shit, he's down there. That's not possible. Nothing in this universe can endanger the ship. In quotation marks. You know, like, the, the uh, Europeanness of this does explain the, uh, the weird nudity that we've seen so far. Like, just, and I, I don't mean that nudity is weird, I just mean that, you know, the, the way that it's just gone like, Here you go, here you go, here you go, and you're like, I'm not expecting any of this. You who played with false realities, modifying them for your pleasure. You who believed only in matter, yet seek new spaces for your minds, rejecting the abominations that surround you. You who believe yourself to be safe. Simply by yawning. I'm seen sorry by, um, uh, by closing your eyes. Beware because your reality has already slipped through your fingers like fine grains of sand. What? Akka? You're in trouble, buddy. What's surrounding you is no longer reality. Unfortunately, I figured it out too late. Whoever did this is very powerful. What is this? I'd say it's time to stop clowning around. Reduce the entire area to ashes and get my subatomic cells out of here. My immortality has to be worth something. Hey, Dacron, can you hear me? Answer me, damn it! I'm sorry, Akka. There's an obstacle. I can't do it. About the only thing that you've been able to say lately is, I'm sorry, Akka. Explain this response. I want an explanation. Akka, there's, there's another problem. There's something that's probing the very powerful losing contact list. You absolutely have to... Don't... Maves. Great. 
Now I'm really risking having to stay in this trap for eternity. That's how an immortal can die. The power of illusion will strike where nothing can touch matter. And here's the gods succumbing to the madness of the mind and the eyes. This demonstration of strength will be the heralds of new rulers. Akka, it's Maeve. I'm near the planet. I think you can hear me too because I'm too small to be incepted. I've worked out a theory that is based on scanning the electrostatic fields. I can stay in orbit and see reality reasonably through your collimator. What the fuck is a collimator? I'll give you the targets from up here. Do exactly as I say. Activate your weapon. And don't pay attention to what you see. Now, go straight ahead. Uh-huh. Target! What is it, Taka? A wall! You've got to demolish it! I'll give you the grid directly into your retina. You'll have to give it about everything you've got. The photonic pulses began to destroy something Aka could not see. Well, yeah. that's very phallic. Come in, oh, well, not phallic, the other thing. Is, is there is there a version of phallic that actually means the other the the, the woman things? Because the the gateway just seemed very um vaginal. Holy shit! <laughs> um. Fire! Maeve's voice seemed to be further away. How is that possible? Why that face? Uh, Aka asked himself as he felt real anxiety for the first time. Egg. Hello, Nick. It's virtual reality. Keep firing! Repeated Maeve, noticing Aka's uncertainty. She looked as if she was in shit. I, I think it's 100% that's what it was. The weapon fired again at the invisible target. Oh, it's dripping. Oh, oh. Yeah, no, this, this is this is pretty damn good 3D for the for the 90s. You're about to reach me. Something in my power didn't work and you can distinguish realities. I was afraid this would happen, but the immortal who fears for a mortal one who preoccupies such an important place in the recesses of his mind is more vulnerable than one who is afraid of for his own life. Oh shit, he's in love with her back. Like we don't he might be like, you know, really, 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 really ancient, and she's what? Unknown, underaged age. Aka continued to push forward in the dreamscape, guided only by Maeve's voice. While the weapon blasted openings through the thick walls that separated Akur from Kalatar's hideaway. Yeah, for all we can say about this game, lacking effort in the details of the enemy creature is not a complaint, yes. The moment of their encounter was drawing close. Also, the effort that they put into that woman's face for the 90s. Uh, we did it. He's close by. The next target will be the alien. Not the alien! Target, fire! Alright, we're getting back into the creepy almost nudity again. It's not real! Keep firing! Repeated Maeve. Oh! Oh, wow! That's a... That's a great shot! Look at that! I found a new background for my, for my wallpaper. Uh, the torment... No! You... You knew you damn machine! You made me shoot her! Don't call me a machine. Remember, I made her the same stuff you are. I just choose to look like this. The virtual reality generator was inside... Was inside Halen? And the alien was behind her, always in line with the weapon. Anyway... There was no other solution. We didn't have any more time. The metaport was activating, and you would have shipped, slipped into a place that Akron couldn't access. 
Helen would have died and you would have been trapped there. Wait, so Helen was there? I thought she was just uh, an, an uh, what's it called? A uh, invisible thing. I thought Halen, Halen's still on the ship. On the other hand, if we hadn't have been interested in her fate, we could have solved the problem much faster. I wouldn't be too much concerned, but we do have to worry about public opinion! <laughs> We're almost there. Everything's calculated. We still have three minutes before she's... Before she... Wait, so, so she was there? No, I'm sorry. I thought she was on the ship. How did she suddenly end up down there in front of an alien? Someone explain this shit to me. Yeah, the, apparently the, the reality warper was inside her. I don't, I don't get it. Like, I, for I thought she was still on the ship. Okay, well here's the sinker ship here, so. No, so that's the that's the dying Helen, Helen. Okay, so she's back in the gooey gooey orb. But does that now mean we have two Helens? Because again, I'm pretty sure she was left on the ship. Killing a human to save a sinker would have been a defeat for us all the same, continued Maeve. And this alien counted on this. Or maybe also on something else? By the way, he probed your mind and chose Helen. I wonder why. Yeah, I want to know why. I'm not, no, I mean, I know why, but... But how? The tiny weightless being, half sinker and half mechanical, was right. The dying girl was incredibly important to Akka, but she's still on the ship! Dakron, the sinker ship, had promised it would do everything in its power to give Halen back to him. How did she get back down there? And there was a good probability of saving her by generating a new body for her. Of course, Helen would no longer be completely human, but then this was an advantage, and hopefully we can, can stop calling her a little girl at that point. Maybe I'll die, but I'll understand my last mistake. The one who knew was not the one who fired the shots, and the one who fired acted without knowing or seeing. This, which appears to be weakness, can instead be strength for some. I'll write this also so that others who arrive when the time comes to lay our power on the world may know. Oh, he's just a little emo dude in the back of a cave waiting for his friends to come visit. That's sad. Oh, that... Uh, okay. Sinker was coded by Marco Patricio with the uh, technical and artistic assistance of the Virtual Views team. Tulio Rolandi, Fabio Patricio, uh, Flavio Curriccio and Francesco Curriccio. Music was composed and arranged by Fancy Fluid, Bruni Gloria, and executed by Sandra Bruni. The story continues in the interactive ex uh, adventure Escape from Thalassar. Jesus, does it exist? Does it exist? Did it happen? Did it happen? Did it Escape. I mean, what's it called? We did press buttons to go from one page to another. Escape from the. Wait, come back. From Thalisa. No, oh, god damn it. Thalisa. I'm only seeing Sinker. Why does it, why does it have a Game Boomers page? <laughs> oh no, it's it's a forum post. Oh, there you go. Marco Patricio, a science fiction illustrator, gave birth to Sinker in 1991. 
His original idea was to create a complete graphic novel using 3D computer graphics. You did really well, mate. Marco, after complete... Oh, is th there's the polys. Well, that explains why it looks so good, because it, obviously the t it's all in the textures. Because, like, that's... Well, you know, that like, for that era, that's, that's already pretty fucking detailed. Uh, Marco, after writing a preliminary draft of the text, began to create the initial characters in the summer of the same year. Like, what's it called? This is about as high poly as um, the Gabriel Knight 3 characters. You're sorry, it was boring. Helen was born after that period. Yeah, so it's all in, in the painted textures. But I am not seeing anything about a sequel unless Foo's found something. I will have to do it more. This storyboarding needed more care. Yeah, definitely. And and English translation probably would have helped more. Like I again, she was on the ship. How did she get back down onto the planet? Marco also began to work on numerous background scenes required, and then realized the wiki listed four episodes. So this is gonna be a couple more. I'm gonna have to find it. I'm gonna have to find them. 1992, with the collaboration with Tullio Rolandi, many of the partial views of Thalassa began to take on their final aspects. This about, like, it having an about page is kind of weird. Uh, in 1992, with the, yes, yes, yes. Dacron was also born in 92. Marco designed Dacron, the gigantic spaceship, which is more than 1800 meters long, with a, a lot of d attention to details. In fact, it is possible to zoom in on, on the model without losing any of its definition. Cool. A rendering of Dacron subsequently became the splash screen for Studio Pro 1.5. Oh. The program used for creating Sinker was Strata Vision 3D and subsequently Strata Studio Pro 1994. Unfortunately, many other commitments slowed down work on Sinker. Inevitably, time passed and 1994 was coming to a close, and the ideas that appeared to be revolution in 1991 had lost some of their values. Sinker, as a consequent, went under a sudden evolution. A multimedia version of CD-ROMs would support the book. Cool. The multimedia sinker would have to be different from the printed version, and it was therefore necessary to supplement it with a lot of animations and music, an enormous job to be completed within a year. Hello. I'm an animation. Marco, together with his brother Fabio, who is also a professional in 3D computer graphics, founded Virtual Views to manage the small but efficient team working full-time on Sinker, and subsequently uh, would be working on new creations. I think they, they plan to make it just 3D graphics in like a book and then um, turned over to make a th uh, make it a you know a graphic thing like this sinker the multimedia novel was created by Mar yeah, 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 uh fancy fluid special thanks to Laura Patricio Maurizio Mangzetti Erico Bonanzo and Dominic Zico Demi Schellis for their invaluable suggestions and yet no one said what so it was 23 pages intriguing Made with Macaradia and made with Strata.